Guide to Port Entry is a comprehensive nautical reference that provides structured, port-specific information for more than 5,000 ports, terminals, and subports worldwide. It is designed to assist navigators and ship operators in a safe and efficient port approach, entry, and operation within the port. The guide includes standardized information on port identification, such as port names, including alternate names and subports, as well as geographical data such as country, state, island, and geographical position. From a navigational perspective and operational information, it covers port limits, approaches, pilotage, anchorages, restrictions, maximum vessel size, tides, density, and radar or VTS services. It also provides information on communications, including radio, VHF channels, port control, and emergency coordination centers. For port services and facilities, Guide to Port Entry explain berthing and mooring arrangements, tugs, cargo handling facilities such as for bulk, container, tanker, LPG or LNG, and specialized cargo, as well as cranes, storage, ballast, freshwater, fuel, and waste disposal. In addition, it contains essential safety and regulatory information, such as health requirements, pollution controls, fire precautions, customs regulations, documentation, certificates, and local port regulations. It also includes repairs and support services, such as dry docks, repairs, surveyors, stevedores, ship chandlers, watchmen, and cargo gear. Guide to Port Entry also covers cruise welfare and shore facilities, such as medical services, freshwater, shore leave arrangements, holidays, and local services, and provides administrative information about port authority, agents, consuls, reporting procedures, and documentation requirements. In this video, I will guide you through the proper use of the Guide to Port Entry and explain how it supports the preparation of a detailed and safe passage plan when approaching or entering a port. Guide to Port Entry is published in several volumes, with the text and plans issued as separate volumes. In the 2022 edition, Volumes 1 and 2 are text volumes, containing detailed written information on ports and terminals worldwide. Volume 1, text, covers ports in countries from Alpha to Juliet. Volume 2, text, covers ports in countries from Kilo to Yankee. Volumes 3 and 4 are plans volumes, which contain schematic port layouts to support passage planning and port approach. Volume 3, Plans, covers ports in countries from Alpha to Juliet. Volume 4, Plans, covers ports in countries from Kilo to Yankee. The text volumes provide structured information on port limits, approaches, pilotage, communications, regulations, services, and facilities, while the Plans volumes provide schematic layouts of ports. Together, these volumes complement each other and are used together with nautical charts, sailing directions, and other nautical publications during passage planning. I have here a copy of the Guide to Port Entry on CD, covering editions from 2011 to 2012, which I will use for this demonstration. Please note that updates beyond 2012 are not reflected in this edition, so it is used for guidance and demonstration purposes only. As this is the CD version, it covers ports and terminals in countries from Alpha to Yankee, both text and plans. Countries that begin with the letter Z are not included because they are landlocked and do not have seaports. Let's say we want to find port details for Hamburg, Germany. Let us first take a look at the charts for the passage to Hamburg. Hamburg is located inside a river. So the vessel will transit along the river during the approach. To determine the port details for Hamburg, let us return to the Guide to Port Entry. In the table of contents, select letter G, since Germany begins with Gulf in the phonetic alphabet. Here we can see the country name listed. The page numbers in this column refer to the textual information, while the page numbers shown in blue correspond to the port plans, where the port layout can be found. 
to locate individual ports in Germany, click Next below, or use the arrow button above to scroll through the list. These are ports in Germany. Continuing on to the next page. We are looking for Hamburg. Here it is, pages 1097 to 1099. Before examining the details of a specific port, it is important to read first the general information for the country. As we can see, the general information covers three pages, from pages 1075 to 1077. Let us open these pages. This general information section spans three pages. Let us take an overview of the key contents. Some of the important information includes restrictions affecting navigation, IMO tanker routes, and approaches via the River Elbe traffic separation scheme. It also provides pilotage information, which is compulsory for certain types and sizes of vessels, as well as the information required when requesting a pilot at least 24 hours prior to arrival at the appropriate pilot station. In addition, district pilots are compulsory for specific vessel categories, and details are provided on pilot transfer by helicopter and deep sea pilotage. The section further includes information on anchorages, including their locations, coordinates, and corresponding charted depth. Pre arrival informations are also covered and notifications prior to entry, along with other operational details. Now, let us proceed to the information specific to the Port of Hamburg. The textual information for the Port of Hamburg covers three pages, and this is the corresponding port layout found in the plan section. I will not go into the detailed discussion of this information as I will now proceed to the ports of Panama and Port Said, Egypt, which were covered in my previous videos on creating an initial route using ocean passages for the world. For those who wish to study this publication further, I will provide a download link to a Guide to Port Entry, which you may use for reference and study purposes. In my previous video, I demonstrated how to create an initial route from Cologne, Panama to Port Said, Egypt using Nautical Publication 136, Ocean Passages for the World. From this publication, we extracted the necessary waypoints, and this is how the route appears when plotted on a sailing chart. If you are new to the channel and would like to learn how to create an initial route using Nautical Publication 136, please check the link in the description for the full explanation. At this stage, this route represents an initial route only and does not yet form a detailed passage plan. To develop the route further, we will now refer to the Guide to Port Entry, which provides detailed information on ports and approaches. Let us begin by gathering information on Port Said, Egypt. We will first examine the port layout in the plan section. This is the layout of Port Said. Let us rotate it to a portrait orientation for better clarity. Here we can identify the Port Said passenger terminal, the Roro terminal, and the container terminal. Assuming our vessel is a container ship, so our destination will be in the container terminal shown here. Please note that the other container terminal shown here belongs to Port Suez and should not be confused with the Port Said container terminal. Now, let us take a look at Port Said in Navi Planner. This is the initial route using waypoints extracted from ocean passages for the world. This waypoint represents the geographical position of Port Said. However, as we can see on the chart, Port Said is located here, and the container terminal is our intended port of destination. So, let us return to the Guide to Port Entry and examine the text section.
These are the textual details covering Port Said. Let us zoom in on this specific section. Here we can see the geographical position of Port Said. We will now add this position to our initial route. To do this, go to Waypoints, then scroll down and double click on the row next to the last waypoint. Replace the existing coordinates with Port Said's position. NaviPlanner can be installed on a PC or laptop. I have already made a separate video showing how to install this software. If you are interested, kindly visit the link in the description below. The waypoint has now been updated, and we can see that the container terminal is located here. If we observe these arrows on the chart, Pointing southbound indicate the recommended traffic flow for vessels entering Port Said, while the arrows pointing northbound indicate the recommended traffic flow for vessels leaving the port. To edit the route, go to Waypoint Editor. Place the cursor on the waypoint to be adjusted, then left-click and drag it to the required position. Let us edit this route in accordance with the recommended traffic flow. Let us now check the edited route. I'll make a separate video on how to use NaviPlanner when creating a passage. Now we need to determine the pilot station. As we can see in the chart, there is no pilot station symbol displayed. In this case, we will return to the Guide to Port Entry to obtain the pilotage details. As stated here, a pilot is compulsory. For more detailed information, we need to refer to the Suez Canal pilotage details. Here is the Suez Canal section. Let us scroll down to locate the pilotage information. This section provides pilotage information for southbound vessels. It states that the Port Said pilot boards at buoy number Hotel Mike 150 and communication takes place on VHF channel 12. If we check the chart, buoy number Hotel Mike 150 is located here. If there is any doubt, especially since this reference is outdated, we can cross-check the information using another nautical publication, NP286, the Admiralty List of Radio Signals for Pilot Services, Vessel Traffic Services, and Port Operations. This edition was published in 2025. Let us locate Egypt, noting that countries' names are arranged in alphabetical order. Here we find Egypt under Mediterranean coast and Suez Canal section. This is the port's name. Let us find Port Said. Here it states that pilotage information should be referred to under the Suez Canal section. Let's scroll down. These are the procedures for vessels entering from Mediterranean. Pilotage is stated as compulsory for all vessels entering, leaving, moving, shifting berth, or maneuvering within canal waters, as well as Port Said and Port Suez harbors. Paragraphs A to D describe the different pilot boarding grounds based on the vessel's type and drafts. I will make a separate video explaining how to use the Admiralty List of Radio Signals as a guide when preparing a passage plan. For now, let us return to the chart and identify the pilot boarding positions. There are four designated pilot boarding grounds. The first is the North Anchorage Area, Zone 1, located approximately in this area. The position can be identified by plotting the given coordinates. 
This pilot boarding ground is intended for VLCCs, third and fourth generation container vessels, lash vessels over 35,000 Suez Canal gross tonnage, LPG and LNG vessels, and vessels with a draft greater than 12.8 meters. The second pilot boarding ground is in the North Anchorage area, Zone 2, located somewhere here. This area is intended for vessels with a draft between 11.9 and 12.8 meters. The third pilot boarding ground is located near the Fairway Light Buoy, which is a North Cardinal Mark. The fourth pilot boarding ground applies to vessels proceeding to a container terminal other than those vessels specified in paragraphs A and B. If we plot the given coordinates, the position will be approximately here. Now let us assume that our vessel is a container ship, but not a third or fourth generation container vessel, meaning a container vessel less than a Panamax size, and has a draft of 9 meters. Based on this, our pilot boarding ground is not in North Anchorage Area Zone 1 or Zone 2. Now for other vessels, the pilot boarding ground is near the Fairway Light Buoy, which is a North Cardinal Mark. You may notice that the pilot boarding position shown for vessels proceeding to a container terminal is located somewhere here, as indicated in paragraph D. However, the direction of traffic flow for Port Said is through the Fairway Buoy. So the pilot boarding ground indicated somewhere here is for those vessels going to Port Suez, where the container terminal is here. Since our destination is Port Said, we will follow the recommended traffic flow toward Port Said. Let us now edit this leg of the route by adding a waypoint and positioning it near the fairway buoy. Please note that the last update of this ENC was in 2015. I also have another ENC edition in which the pilot station symbols are displayed. Here we can see the pilot station in North Anchorage Area Zone 1. Zone 2 is located here. And this pilot station, near the fairway buoy, serves as the pilot boarding ground for vessels proceeding to Port Said Harbor, other than those specified in paragraphs A and B of the pilot boarding procedures. In actual operations, before arriving in the Anchorage area, communication will already have been established with the port or pilot station. The vessel will then be advised whether to drop anchor at the designated Anchorage area or to proceed directly to the pilot boarding ground, where the pilot will embark and bring the vessel to the intended port of destination. That's all for now. I hope you found this video helpful. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye.